Radio Raw here with Joe Goosen. We are on the edge of maybe, you know, the biggest fight of the year. Yeah. So much tension up on the stage, the fighters, the electricity. But in the corner, you got to keep it cool. You got to keep it calm. Yeah. How do you keep Ryan Garcia's head in the game all the way up to the moment that the final bell rings? Well, the, the, we're assuming a lot here that, you know, there's going to be a, a final bell, you know. I mean, uh, if we're talking a knockout, there, the final bell won't, we won't ever get there, right? Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Well, there'll still be a final bell. It there, just won't be well, the one that punctuates the end of the fight. Yeah, they don't, they don't ring the bell when you get knocked out. Right. <laughs> ah. But the last <laughs> round will no, have a bell. No, no, no. If you get knocked out in the fifth, there's a bell in the fourth. Well, that would be the preceding bell before the end of the fight. Which could also be called the final okay, bell. Yeah, are we going to do this all day? Or not? Should we start over? <laughs> no, okay, no, no, I'm just not. kidding. Okay, no, that's fine. I, I like doing this. I understand. This is what we do in camp anyway. You know, we just bust chops. You know? <laughs> right. So, but, but your question, it's a fair question. What, you know, how do I, you know, maintain uh ryan's you know demeanor in the in the ring how do i keep him calm focused and everything else right right um but the good thing is is that um ryan is is naturally that way anyway hmm. he's very calm you know and you know i'd say you can watch his fights and see how he comports himself but um in sparring i'll use this example Ryan is uh, very attentive to what you have to say. He's very focused. He will key in on what you're telling him. And like all great fighters, and this is something that I'm telling you is the truth, all great fighters will do what you ask them to do in the corner. So if I said, you know, Ryan, I think after that punch, you should follow up with this and that because I think that, you know, is open for you. He'll literally in the first five seconds go do that. That's mm -hmm. what I love about him. So he listens. Now, he also listens to himself. He's got a great inner voice for the sport. Um, and um, he's, like I say, Ryan is a highly intelligent um, fighter. Um, he assesses things as he goes along. Now, you always say, well, you don't want to think a lot when you're in the ring. You know, you just want to do time for thinking is over, blah, 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 right? You know, mm. but... You can't help. You're a human being with a brain. You can't help but to think. And Ryan is um, very uh, uh, calculating in the ring because he's he's a thinker, and um, he's just a calm. Overall, he's just got a great gen, uh, ring generalship at all times. So now, look, if things get dicey, if if the worm turns on us. Well, then, of course, that I'll have a bigger part to play. But I, I really feel that my role in this will be more of a, of a guide through this and not to where I have to really, you know, you know beat the pony uh, the, down, down the stretch. I, I think um, we've pretty much covered most of the ground. You never know what's going to happen in a fight, as we all know. But i um, and I, you never know where you're really going to be needed. You're needed just in general. But um, like I say, it's a crapshoot sometimes. You talk about Ryan being a thinker. Yeah. He talks about his focus uh, yeah. quite often. And a calm, thinking, focused fighter would be unlikely to pick an opponent that he doesn't think he can beat. So obviously Ryan That's believes right. he can win this fight. That's right. He's an underdog, a fairly sizable one. Right. But he says that when he said to me yesterday that when we see Tank, we don't see what he sees. Has he shared with you what he must see as the vulnerability that the rest of us don't? Well, I look, I mean again, I I I I think the the Thing that we have done do uh ryan has done it and and i have done it is we watch his fights i mean that's the best way to find out what is most likely going to be in front of you um you know watch the leo santa cruz fight you watch the roley fight you watch um the isaac cruz fight you watch the mario barrios fight the hector garcia fight just those five fights there 
will paint a, 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 a realistic picture of what you're up against and it will also point out patterns, you know, negative patterns and positive patterns that you can then, you know, strategize against. Um, so, I mean, we've done all that and but what I mean, run, uh, no, but then uh, to finish this is that we've we see things that we're going to capitalize on for sure, mm -hmm. and they will definitely if we capitalize on them in the way that I believe we will. Well, uh, there could be some you know devastating consequences for our opponent in that ring. Is there any concern for you that Ryan hasn't been in the ring since July? Tank's been busy. He's been in the ring as recently as. It January is uh, like early rounds. Maybe I'm getting his rhythm, his timing. Is there any ring rust? Well, well let me ask you, well, how many fights has Tank had in the past year? Three? Yes. Okay. Well, this will be our third fight. Um, it's not that too big of a, much of a difference. We fought in April, almost a year ago. We fought uh, uh, Fortuna. Several months, that was six, seven months ago. Um, and to tell you the truth, I liked the idea of Ryan and I both agreed that that January tune up fight was unnecessary because by the time the, the whole negotiations for that were taking place and things were being decided. I don't think Ryan and as much of a perfectionist as Ryan and felt he had enough time to be a monster, mm. you see? And he said, you know what? I'm gonna bypass that. I'm gonna tra train straight through it all the way into April. And let me tell you something, it was a wise decision. It was a wise decision because he looks fantastic. And see, it gave him time to become that monster on the road, in the strength training, and in the boxing gym. It gave him time where he felt he couldn't really reach any more heights in terms of uh, physical and spiritual, uh, you know, well-being. When fighters occasionally change trainers, there's always a discussion about how long it takes for that relationship to gel, how long it takes for the new style that the trainer brings to be acclimated. Right. Where are you in that process with Ryan? Well, number one, I mean, I don't know if you were aware of this, but Ryan trained at my gym when he was 17. I, I you know, I, I encouraged Ryan to turn pro to his mom and dad, Lisa and Henry, when he was 17. He was that good at 17. In fact, he was so good that um, I tried to sign him. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I brought in some money people, and I don't usually do that for 17-year-olds that really, you know, haven't brought home some Olympic medal or something. But um, that being said, and I have signed young guys before, don't get me wrong, but Ryan, I really went after, I put together a good package for him, all sorts of goodies. He ended up signing with somebody else as management, and then eventually they took him to Oscar, and that's the way it is, and worked out fine for him. Um, that said, I, I was, you know, I had a relationship with Ryan and his parents. He did train at my gym for several months. I did make some offers. And so we have a little bit of a background there. Um, and we always liked each other. And I'd, I'd give him and um, his uh, brother, Sean, rides home. They didn't live far from the gym. Their sister had an apartment. So we developed uh, a relationship there. And we, we all liked each other. Now, when he went a separate way, we still stayed in contact, right? would call me in between certain fights and I was doing my thing, he was doing his thing, but we never lost touch with each other. Um, so by the time, you know, a couple of years rolled by um, and he, he decided to split from his former trainer, uh, they decided to give me a call and but thank God they did. So it wasn't just like that was the first time I ever met Ryan. You know, I had a background with him, uh, a friendly relationship with him. Um, I was on good terms with his parents. So it, it was easy to transition into this whole thing. And now this is our third fight together. And it, it, it feels like longer, to tell you the truth. We've, there's, Ryan and I are um, 
simpatico on a lot of issues and uh, ideas about the sport. And uh, so I, I think it's a very um, easy, comfortable situation and relationship right now. I'm very happy with it, and I think it's going to bear fruit Saturday night. A lot has been discussed about the terms of negotiation for the fight. Yeah. Hydration clauses and alike. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like Ryan has put himself at a disadvantage? Are you a bit more behind the eight ball than you should fairly be based on all of these provisions and clauses that he has to meet? Well, I, I think, you know, the provisions and clauses that you speak of basically is number one, the weight, 136. But just let me remind everybody that we were going to fight Fortuna, Javier Fortuna, at 135, okay, uh, one year ago today. So, you know, we have no issue with making 136. It was Fortuna that couldn't make 135. So we had to move up to 140, okay? Mm -hmm. um, that's a fact. So um, making 136 is not a problem. That's something they demanded and it was something easily to agree to. Then uh, the next issue was the 10 pound uh, weight limit uh, up until 10 a.m. fight day. So we'll weigh in at more or less three o'clock tomorrow, Friday, and then up until 10 a.m. Saturday morning, we cannot be more than 146 pounds. But like I say, by the way, do you like steak? Love steak. Have you ever eaten a whole 16-ounce steak? Indeed I have, sir. Yes, and, and it's, it's a filling meal, right? Yeah. Well, he could conceivably eat 10 of those and fulfill his weight agreement. You understand what I'm saying? That's a lot of food. <laughs> so 10 pounds is, is nothing to be afraid of. I mean, actually, it might be more than we need for that particular time span. And then at 10.01, you're not gonna, he's not gonna fight till what, eight, nine o'clock? Saturday night? So at 10.01, if he's hungry still, he can have breakfast uh, at 10.01. At two o'clock, he could have a nice lunch with assorted uh, items of his choice. Mm. And um, so where's the problem? And lastly, Joe, yeah. everyone is obviously focused on the fighters in the ring as they should be. Yeah. But with a storied career such as your own and the kind of mega fights you've been in along these decades, how special is this for you to be training a fighter like Ryan at this stage of his career who's an underdog mm -hmm. in a fight of this magnitude? Yeah, and you know, it's funny. I hear the word underdog and I never really correlate Ryan Garcia and the word underdog together. I really don't. Um, that being said, I, I really am enjoying um, my uh, mature years now in this game to deal with somebody like Ryan. He's, he's a lot of fun too. Now again, when he gets focused and we start coming down to crunch time, He's got a little, you know, he's a, he can be a little dicey, and that's a good thing. I want my fighters to be edgy going into a fight. You don't want them, you know, off here and there. You want them focused, and that he is. Um, and, of course, I've got a gym full of fighters. I got Chris Ariola. I got working. I got Gurgen Hovanissian, the heavyweight, who just beat Michael Clark in New York a few months ago after only four professional fights. Of course, he was an Olympian for the Armenian boxing team. He's 6'6", 280. Um, I got Yoelvis Gomez, who's in the top 10 already, 7-0, six knockouts. Beautiful Cuban left-hander whose father was the Olympic gold medal winner in 1980 uh, for the Cuban national team. I've got uh, Giovanni Bruzon, Sao Paul heavyweight as well. And then Damien Lescai, or Lescaye as I call him, 2-0 um, right now as a Cuban. So, I, I, you know, I'm staying busy. I, I, I love the game. I don't ever want to retire. Um, I wouldn't know what to do if they said you have to stay home. I, it seems inconceivable to me, but uh, this, this whole ride with Ryan right now, um, you know, from the first fight I had with him against To Go and then to Fortuna, and then for it to culminate in something like this. But, and Ryan basically, by virtue of uh, force, 
uh, initiated this whole process and it's come to fruition. It's pretty amazing um, that he willed this thing into existence. Well, that all being true, what I mean from your perspective, though, is that with the debate as to whether or not Ryan should have left the Reynosos, obviously uh, they've got Canelo. They are, you know, at the top of the game, especially at that time. When you take on Ryan and now he's an underdog in a fight of this magnitude, if you're able to be in that corner and he's able to succeed on the yeah. night, mm -hmm. I mean, for you, how special is that as a trainer wow. to have proven that not only he made the right choice, but you were able to take him, you know, through a fight with Tank Davis to victory? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I don't like to count my uh, chickens before they're hatched, as they say. I mean, all that would be well and good. I really don't give that a lot of thought. I really don't, if any thought at all. You know, I'm pretty single-minded with mm. what I do, you know, and... Um, I, I always think the um, astonishment comes after it all happens, not before. Mm. So for me, it's like, okay, we're, we're, we've got a, a task ahead of us. And it's, it's, it's obviously, in everyone's eyes, a, a tall order. And look, I think on both ends, Tank Davis even said, because from his own lips, he goes, this is going to be the toughest fight of my career. Mm. Because he knows. He knows other people can scoff at it. Da, da, da. He doesn't have the experience. This, that. Tank Davis knows what Ryan is capable of. Believe you me. And so, yes, if when we are successful, and I truly believe we will be, um, I think it's it's it'll it'll set in, uh, and I'll realize just what a great thing our team was able to pull off. And um, I'm. Like I said, that's only a couple of days away, so we <laughs> shall, she, uh, shall see about all that. But I'm I'm looking forward to the fight Saturday night. Well, I'm looking forward to watching four men at work in that squared circle, two in the corner and two in the center of the ring. All four of you, I know what you are capable of, and that is greatness. So we will see, as you say. About, you're talking about Calvin. Calvin Ford, Ford yeah, yeah. Joe Goosen. Tank Ryan, Davis, Ryan. Ryan Garcia, all four yeah. have the potential to be great on Saturday night and are capable of amazing, amazing work. Thank so we you. will watch you all do your best. And I appreciate the time oh, and watching you over pleasure. these decades really as a young buck. Right? <laughs> all these decades? You're well, not that old. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you are. You so so yes, I, I watched right. you for all you those decades. Okay, yes. Right. <laughs> Radio uh, Raheem uh -huh. with Joe Goosen.